Welcome to the fourth lecture on group action. In this lecture, we will discuss about the relation between orbit and fixed point set and orbit and stabilizer. Before going through this lecture, it is desirable that you go through the lecture group action 1, group action 2 and left coset and right cosets. Okay, let us start. Suppose G is a group and it is acting on a set X through an action star. Then we know that fixed point set XG is defined as those X and G such that G star of X is equal to X for all G and G. Now suppose I take an element X0 in the fixed point set. Then what will happen? If we determine the orbit of this element then orbit of this element by definition is G star X0 such that G belongs to G. But because X0 is an element of fixed point set so G star of X0 is X0 by definition of fixed point set. So this means that orbit of X0 the order of orbit of X0 is 1. Further, suppose that I choose an element X in X and now the orbit of X is equal to X suppose. Then what does it mean? By definition of orbit of X, it consists of elements of the form G star of X such that G belongs to G. And because this whole orbit is equal to x, it means that g star of x is equal to x for all g in g. But this is the definition of fixed point set. It means x is a fixed point set. So the conclusion is that if I take an element in fixed point set, then the order of its orbit will be 1. Or simply the orbit of this element will contain only one element that is x and the converse is also true means if the orbit of an element contains only one element then that element is an element of fixed point set. Now come to the another observation. Observation 2. Fix an element x in x and define a map phi from the set of all left cosets of a stabilizer of x in G to orbit of x in G. A stabilizer of x in G is a coset and each coset can be represented in different manners. For example, if G1 and G2 are two elements of a coset then same coset can be represented by G1 and the same coset can be represented by G2 also. Now suppose I define the map like phi G star phi G stabilizer of X in G is equal to G star of X. Because a single coset can be represented by different elements so we need to show that if we choose two representative G1 and G2 of the same coset means if G1 stabilizer of X in G is same as G2 stabilizer of X in G then G1 star of X should be equal to G2 star of X or phi of G1 should be equal to phi of G2 because phi we want to show it is a map. We are claiming to be a map claiming phi to be a map. So we will prove that phi is a map actually and then we will proceed. This is called the well defined property of map or actually phi is a map. So suppose I have two element g1 g2 of the group g such that the g1 stabilizer of x in g is same as g2 stabilizer of x in g. Then by the property of cosets we can write as 
जी टू इनवर्स जी वन स्टेबलाइजर ऑफ एक्स इन जी इज इक्वल टू स्टेबलाइजर ऑफ एक्स इन जी बट अगेन वी नो दैट इफ एच इज ए सब ग्रुप एंड ए एच इज इक्वल टू एच देन ए बिलोंग्स टू एच सो बाई दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ कोसेट जी टू इनवर्स जी वन शुड बिलोंग्स टू स्टेबलाइजर ऑफ एक्स बाई डिफिनीशन ऑफ स्टेबलाइजर ऑफ एक्स जी टू इनवर्स जी वन स्टार ऑफ एक्स शुड बी एक्स नाउ वट इज इट मीन्स जी टू स्टार जी टू इनवर्स जी वन स्टार ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जी टू स्टार ऑफ एक्स वी अप्लाइड जी टू ऑन बोथ साइड इन द प्रीवियस आइडेंटिटी Now, by the property of group action, we can combine G two with this. So we have G two, G two inverse G one, star of x is equal to G two star of x. So, but G two G two inverse is identity. So, identity of G one star of x is equal to G two star of x. so this implies that g1 star of x is equal to g2 star of x it may it means phi of g1 this implies that phi of g1 is equal to phi of g2 so it means the map phi is well defined now we will show that This map phi is one one. So for showing one one, what we have to do, if we take two elements g one and g two and g, and if g one star of x is equal to g two star of x, we need to show that g one stabilizer of x in g is equal to g two stabilizer of x in g. It means we need to show just opposite of the things which we have just now shown. so g1 star of x is equal to g2 star of x means phi of g1 is equal to phi of g2 phi of g1 is equal to phi of g2 means g1 star of x is equal to g2 star of x and this means that phi this implies that e g1 star of x is equal to g2 star of x and in place of e we can put g2 g2 inverse g1 so we can write it like this so this implies this is step and this implies this is step because by the property of group action we can take g2 out okay and this implies that we can operate g2 inverse on both sides and that will cancel out so we have g2 inverse g1 star of x is equal to g2 star of x that is the thing which we have just now proved g2 inverse g1 star of x is equal to x so this means g2 inverse g1 belongs to the stabilizer of x in g and it means g2 inverse g1 stabilizer of x in g is equal to stabilizer of x in g so it by the property of coset we can write it as g1 stabilizer of x in g is equal to g2 stabilizer of x in g it means if the image of two elements are equal then both the elements are equal so this map is 1 1 now we will show that this map is onto but this map is onto by its definition because if i take any element of orbit of x in g then that element will look like g star of x now g star of x 
is always the image of G stabilizer of X and G. So, by definition, this is a this is an onto map. So phi is an onto map. So phi is a bijective map. Suppose uh, our group G is a finite group, then the orbit of X in G is a finite set. Why? Because by definition, orbit of X in G is G star of X such that G belongs to G. But because G is finite, so G star X will be finitely many elements. So orbit of X and G will always be finite. Okay. Now because phi is a bijective map, so the order of the domain will be equal to the order of the range. So the number of left coset of a stabilizer of X and G will be same as the orbit of X and G. So we know by the lecture on left coset that order of G upon order of a stabilizer of G is equal to the order of the left cosets. Number of the left coset. So order of G upon stabilizer of X and G, the order of a stabilizer of X and G is equal to the order of orbit of X. That is the number of element in the orbit. This result is called the orbit stabilizer theorem. Now come to the example. Suppose that we have a group G and X is a set and G is acting on X through conjugation. Conjugation means G star of X is equal to GX G inverse. This action has been discussed in group action 1 and group action 2. And in group action 2, we have also calculated the stabilizer of an element and this turns out to be the centralizer of the element in G. And orbit of an element turns out to be the conjugacy class of X in G. That is, the collection of all conjugates of X in G. So, by the observation just now we have done, that is orbit stabilizer theorem, the order of G upon the order of a stabilizer which is equal to the centralizer of X in G is equal to the orbit of X in G, that is the conjugacy class of X in G. So, order of G upon order of the centralizer of X in G is equal to the number of conjugates of X in G. But this ratio is called the index of the cent centralizer. So we can say that the index of centralizer of an element in G is equal to the order of conjugacy class of that element or the number of conjugates of that element. This is the number of conjugates of that element. For example, suppose G is a group S3. S3 is the symmetric group on three symbols. Where this 1 2 means a map which is sending 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 and fixing 3. Similarly 1 3, 2 3 and 1 2 3 is a map which is sending 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 1. Now take an element X to be 1 2. And the centralizer of X in G we can see that only these two elements will commute with 1, 2. So the centralizer will be identity and 1, 2. And uh, one can check that the conjugacy class of X and G will have three element 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. So what is order of G upon the centralizer of X and G? Order of G is 6 and the centralizer of X has two elements. So it is order 2 the ratio is 3 and this is exactly the number of element in the conjugacy class of X and G. Now on the same way we can do one more example which we have not discussed earlier 
and uh, this is suppose G is a group and X is the set of all subgroups of G. We define an action star to be G star G cross X to X as G star of H where H is a subgroup to be G H G inverse. Uh, one can easily note that if H is a subgroup then G H G inverse is also a subgroup. Uh, yes, now it is an exercise for you to show that this star is an action. Now we will determine the orbit of this orbit of an element. Now take an x in x. Orbit of x in G is G star of x such that G is in G. So G star of x is equal to G H G inverse such that G belongs to G. Actually this is the this is called the conjugate of H in G. So this set is actually called the conjugacy class of H in G. So we denote it as CLG H. Now we determine the stabilizer of H in G. A stabilizer of H in G is equal to those G in G such that G H G inverse G star H is equal to H. So those G in G such that G H G inverse is equal to H. But this set in group theory is called the normalizer of H in G and denoted as normalizer of H in G. So by observation 2 that is orbit stabilizer theorem we have G upon normalizer of H in G the order of G upon order of normalizer of H in G should be same as the order of conjugacy class of H in G. Note that in both the examples we have taken the finite group. So this is called the index of the normalizer of H in G and this is the conjugacy class of H in G. So we can say that the index of normalizer of a subgroup of G is equal to the number of conjugates of H in G. So if you want to determine the number of conjugates of a subgroup then you can see the you can determine the normalizer of the subgroup and take the index of that subgroup. Okay, thank you. In the next lecture, we will discuss the class equation. Thank you.